Get on the flavor train. Get on the flavor train. Get on the flavor, the flavor, the flavor train. Get on the flavor train with your girl, Lady T. Ooh, yeah. Big Bubba, Bubba, Bubba. Big Bubba, 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 Big Bubba. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tanya Lady T, and this is another edition of Lady T Sensations. Let's get on this flavor train because why? The tickets are free. Okay, tonight we're having some leftover um, spaghetti salad that my mom had. So good. And uh, I got some beets. And I've got some smoked sausage. And yeah, your girl did it. I'm craving my onions again. So I got a whole sweet onion with some mushrooms mixed in. So we're about to do it. Thank you, most gracious and heavenly Father, for the food I'm about to receive, for the nourishment of my body, for Christ's sake. Amen. And this pasta salad, it is, it is a cold salad, so, um, but it is so good. It's almost like the same seasonings my mom put in it for her kale. She, um, put in here. It's got tomatoes, garlic, it's just such a good cool salad so good mm. Mm. the flavor of them beets Just a regular Smithfield smoked sausage, y'all. Good eating, y'all. Good eating. It's something different. And I wanted to cook up some stuff that I had. I had this last piece of sausage where I cooked. Mm. Still hot. Mm. I'm going to start trying to upload more, y'all. Some of y'all have asked. Can't go nowhere without Bubba. Big Bubba. Bubba. Big, big Bubba. Bubba, 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 Bubba. Big Bubba. Yeah, we're doing Big Bubba water tonight, y'all. Oh. Hit me, hit me. Thirsty, thirsty. Mm. Yeah, I'm finna get real busy on my job, so. I'll be doing a little bit more food preparation here at home. Mm. Mm. So good.
hot. Mm. This is a quick meal too. Get you some Smithfield sausage. Stir fried in the pan with some vegetables. Boil you a pot of rice. What? Got you a meal. Mm. Sometimes you just have to enjoy your food. Y'all, I done got hooked on that show. Power. They say this is a big, rich town. Yeah. I just come from the smallest part. Or is it the hardest part? Y'all. I bet you that's rich. He had to go out of town. Helping one of his friends get to their doctor's appointment. He probably just getting home. Let me know he's on. Mmm. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even understand. Let me let's let Auntie talk to y'all. This is for younger people and or older people. But mostly for you younger people. I know y'all like to do stuff. I was her too. We like to do stuff to please other people all the time. Mmm. And we get caught up doing things for other people. And when we do it, we ourselves become miserable. And because, you know, we all want to be light. We want to be included in things. Excuse me, y'all. But sometimes it, it might cause us to do stuff. And we wind up being in the ditch. You know what I'm saying? 
um, just trying to please other people. So I just want to just encourage you young people, you know, sometimes it's okay. It's okay that everybody don't like you. And I know that's hard to hear because who doesn't want to be like growing up when you're trying to identify with yourself? And it can be like that for grown people. When we get older, we get our job, and there's always them certain people that always go to lunch together. I'm telling you, you wouldn't think. That that stuff goes on all throughout your life. You know, if you're, if you're having to be in that type of environment. You're going to always have people that are not going to like you. You can... You can buy a person a house or a car, pay off their debt. Somebody's going to get mad. Somebody's going to not like what you do. And see, my granddaughter's at that age. My niece and my nephew, they're at that age where... They're going to the eighth grade. My granddaughter, Lauren, she's going to the eighth grade. And it can be a very challenging and terrifying reality for them. They're excited. And, you know, I talk with her and let her know, oh, it'll be fine. And once she goes, you know. But I think it's that fear of unknown. And I think that's just a natural feeling. But we have to talk to our children and tell them that, look, everybody's not going to love you. Everybody's not going to love the, the, the type of shoes you're wearing, honey. Everybody ain't going to like the way you fix your hair. And I know that's a real thing for some of you young people. How to deal when people don't like you. So many teenagers are having to deal with that. Or something. And then you have groups of mean girls and everything like that. So all that come with the territory of going to high school, grade school. But I really think it's important that parents, you have to talk to your children. You can't all automatically assume that your child is going to school and doing everything they're supposed to do right. There are some parents that they think their little Susie is the cream of the crop. She might ever be. But she might be a bully. She might be a mean girl. She might be one of those people that's always stirring up mischief. And I know we as parents, we're busy. I get it. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of parents, they don't, want, they don't even step foot into their children's school until it's like, what, open house? They don't step foot in their children's school all year long. And granted, 
there are certain things that the school and the structure of the school should be able to handle and take care of. But for the most part, we as parents have to do our job. We have to be able to talk to, to our children beyond the little simplicity stuff. We really have to get in there and talk with our children because, they're, you know, I think about, and it may have always been, but, you know, when you get older, you start reflecting. And I mean, there is so much. Because when I was coming up, it was it was, it was was uh, teenage pregnancy. And, I mean, it still happens, but it was just like, you know, I was one of, I was her. I was one of the ones that got caught up, teenage pregnancy. But what I'm saying is, you know, and that in itself was, you know, terrifying. And I'm bringing all of this up because, yeah, children, some, some schools, some states, they already back, going back, they already back to school. Mm, y'all, this is so good. I can remember when I was younger, and there was this, um, I had, you know, rode the bus, and I got on the bus with some high school students. I was like in the, I was in kindergarten, kindergarten or first grade, one somewhere around there. Well, if you were a high school student and you live in the same neighborhood I lived in and you know you would ride the same route you might got dropped off at a different you know school along the way but anyway I can remember this older she was in high school and there was this older girl and some of y'all gonna remember this whenever I would get on the bus she would look at me and I hope y'all can see my face. She would look at me and she'd go. Well, back then, back in the day, if you did that, that means that I don't like you, you know. Does any of y'all remember that? <laughs> Some of y'all gonna remember that. Huh? When you looked at people, you did like this. Like now we'll read people. People are reading that. But back then, you looked at somebody, you went, almost like your nose is itching, like Samantha to be and bewitched. And I still remember, and she used to do, and that, that terrified me. And I'm like, oh my God, why did she, and she just always did that to me, you know? But anyway, like, like I said, not to get all off into the negativity of that, but just, you know, encourage your children that, you know, look, they're in love, and they, they, they know all that, and we can tell them all that. But we just have to give them the tr God's honest truth and say, listen, everybody's not going to like you. You need to understand that even though you have not done one single thing to them, they don't like you because your, you got a good grade of hair. They don't like you because your mama was able to get you this pair of pants and they weren't able to get a pair of pants. Instead of just saying, you know, and, and if you have friends that don't, that are less fortunate and if you're able to, you know, after you've worn them pants and if, if they can fit them, you know, hey. Ask your mom, can I, can I give this to so-and-so? And then, you know, you have to also be cautious of that because you don't want people to feel embarrassed, you know, that you're giving them your hand-me-down. But I'm just saying, there's always a way to sharpen your, to be friendly to people, even though they're not friendly to you. And don't let that take away from who you are as young people. But like I said, we have to be able to tell our children straight up. And I've told my granddaughter, listen, Everybody may not like you because, you know, if they bring that kind of stuff up to you, they ask you questions about that. People, some, some, they just aren't. And you have to be uh, okay with that. And if, and until you are okay with that, just understand it is, it, it's nothing you've done. If you know you've gone 
to school and you haven't bothered anybody, you're about studying. And I, did, I told my grand, granddaughter, I said, honey, all you all have to do, I've told my nieces and nephews, uh, the y'all's job is to go to school, study hard, pay attention, don't run your pie hole in class like I used to when I was your age. They call me jack jaw, but see, I still jack jaw. They call me motor mouth, I still, I still motor mouth. But you know, yeah. I caused it to work for my good. <laughs> but you know, when you're younger, you know. But that's their job. Go to school, learn as much as you can because it's going to that's it, it, that's going to be part of your future. That's going to be part of what you're going to be able to do when you're when you're older. You know. And I think too, as adults, it's just like me. I didn't get it right when I was raising my son. There was a village of folks that had to help me. But I can speak on it now because as you know better, you do better. But yeah, I told my granddaughter, your job is to get good grades, study as best as you can, do the best you can, and be able to also be okay to open up your mouth if you need help. Again, I told my granddaughter, listen, when you go in your class and you need help and you just you're afraid to ask a question in front of your other classmates listen you get it because they might you will always be in a classroom where somebody can get, they can hear an instruction from a teacher one time and they get it they got it but you might have other children in that classroom that they learn more visually they learn more by vocal they learn, or some people may learn by demonstration. So I applaud teachers because the te teachers have to know, they have to go in there with a mindset. Okay, I might got three different learners in here. Maybe 10, 10 out of the 30 students will get it the first time I say it. But the other 20, again, they might fall in the category of a visual learner, more of a talkative, more of a hands-on, more of a, you know. So you, you have to have, you know, a teacher has to know all that stuff or be at least try to be mindful of that when he, they got a classroom, a classroom, and you know I've talked to my cousin. My cousin's a teacher, so she has told me those type of thing. Um, like some children, just depending on de demographics and ge and geography, you know, some some children don't know what a basement is. Basement? What you talk? Like if they ask a question, uh, and the answer, you know, the question might be. Uh, pick the word below that that describes something down or below, you know. Well, if a, the, the children ain't gonna know that what a basement is, you know what I mean. And basements are normally below or underground or whatever. But if if a child has never been in a house or been exposed or never heard, they're not they're not gonna associate below with basement unless they were exposed to that kind of stuff. So you know that's why I said you know a lot of times. You know, I think, too, here's another thing. Let your children be children. I know a lot of times we've been trying to grow our children up fast so we don't have to do a whole lot of stuff for them no more. And that's, that can be good in some instances. Because we all enjoy being empty nesters. I know I do. I, 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 I said I know I do. But what I'm saying... We have to be mindful not to grow our children up too fast. Now, there are exceptions now. I don't expect my 16-year-old to still be walking around playing with a Tonka truck. You understand what I'm saying? Now, it might be a different, let's say he's building a truck. See what I'm saying? The maturity level will come.
But anyway. Because Lauren would tell me last year, she would tell me, she said, Grandma, I don't want to grow up. I said, well, that's the natural progression. I said, but... There's nothing wrong with some of the things you still like to do. You know? Like watching cartoons. Heck, there's grown folks that watch cartoons. Every once in a blue moon, if I see, um... What, the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote? Hmm. Sometimes I'll see... If I be flipping, well, I don't see it too much anymore because I don't cut out a bunch of that stuff, but. But anyway. Oh my gosh, y'all. I am full. The flavor. But, you know, I asked my granddaughter, I thought, you know, what is one of your biggest fears? And going to middle school, high school, and it's always been the same. I, I just, you know, I, they, want, they want to know people and or they always say, I don't know anybody. I'm like, well, what about your, your classmates that were with you in the seventh grade? Y'all know each other, but see, it's the other folks. It's the other folks they don't know. They're scared they're not going to have a class with a familiar face, you know? They're looking for a level of comfort. And just like now with my granddaughter, I know she's at that age where everything is embarrassing. Grandma, don't say that. Grandma, shh, you're talking too loud. Grandma, I mean, everything is so embarrassing. That is so funny to me. Like, if my uh, granddaughter's out with me and we shopping, and I said, ooh, let's go over here to this, over here on this area. She said, shh, Grandma, everybody can hear you. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm just telling you we're going over here to, we're going over here. What's the big what? But I don't know what that is about, y'all. They're, they're teenagers. They don't want you to say, they don't want you to walk around and, and point. I mean, is that what y'all want us to do? You just want us to point, point and click? <laughs> mm. Anyway, y'all. Um, mm. I got to eat the rest of these onions. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. A big bubble. 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 Big bubble. 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 Big bubble. Oh my god. Mm. But anyway, all you students, 
from pre-K on up to PhD. I wish all the best. I pray you strengthen the Lord. I pray that you're able to endure through them, them papers and oh, I think I've already told y'all I had thought about going back to school for psychology, honey. When I saw how much it was gonna cost, I said, "No, nah, I'll keep my my I'll keep my my MBA, my business degree, <laughs> business administration. I I'll keep it. I'm doing pretty good. We we'll, we we'll love to do better." I would keep it. But anyway, I pray for y'all. All them oh my goodness, I can I can remember all those papers I had to write. But you know what? Once y'all get them youngsters. And all y'all out there, once it, once you get it, the the, the bless the blessing is yours. Can't nobody take it away. It's yours. You you work hard. Every paper, every sleepless night, every every time you jumped up and had to run across campus to get to the class so you wouldn't be late. You did what you had to do and you earned it. And can't nobody take it away from you, so it pays off and it's a that's a personal when you when you go to school and you go to whether you whether you graduate high school and just go straight into the workforce or military, whatever the case may be, or you go to school, college, for whatever whatever field you're in. When you go and you do it the right way, meaning jokers, you didn't cheat the whole way through. But I'm just saying, when you have stuck it through, and it was real, because I remember I was going to school and I was working. Oh, gee, whoo, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so go to my shata. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Woo. Mm. I made it, but that what that's all I'm saying is that when you fit when you got that degree, like I said, whether it's your high school diploma, your high school diploma equivalency, your your master's, uh your four year, your master's, your PhD, what huh? Let me tell you, when you did it and you 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 hit that pavement and you let your feet penetrate that pavement and you did what you had to do. To get that degree, let me tell you, honey, ain't a better feeling in the world because that's a personal thing. That's something you personally accomplished. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. You know, One-Eyed Ricky and Ashy Me Ashley, they may have helped you and, 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 and you. she was your signing board and he went over this with you in the library and, and y'all did mock tests to make sure that you passed it when the real one came. Oh, yeah, we're thankful for all of that. But ultimately, let me tell you something. That's a good feeling. Huh. Good feeling of accomplishment. And that's what I try to tell my nieces and nephews and my granddaughter. Look, this is about getting it for you. Anyway, y'all don't ran my mouth. That's why I was called motor mouth. All right, y'all, I'm about to do it. Mm. I got some reading to do, and I'm going to get in the bed early today. Y'all, I might get in the bed. It still might be light outside because it, it, gets, it gets dark here about 8.30. Anyway... Oh, <laughs> big bubba. Anyway, y'all, 
Again, I thank y'all for sharing my video. I thank you that you're going to cause all my videos to be increased in watch time. I thank you that my faithful truths are going to like this video. I thank you for the increase that y'all bring to my channel daily. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to say thank you for stopping on the flavor train because what? What? Flavor is where it's at. Y'all have a good one, y'all.